So Joe Rogan has the biggest podcast on earth. He needs no introduction, but unfortunately for the animals, he's also a committed anti-vegan carnivore diet advocate who often makes baseless claims about veganism without citing anything more than this guy said it, therefore it's true. In fact, it seems that whenever Joe has a guest on his show that reflects his passionate bias against veganism, he does literally nothing to fact check the outrageous claims made. And there's no greater display of this behavior than in his recent podcast with Taylor Sheridan, the co-creator of the TV series Yellowstone. So this guy presents himself as an expert on everything, but then makes a complete embarrassment out of himself by essentially making up a bunch of lies about ethical veganism while Joe Rogan just nods along in agreement. I think one of the most absurd positions anyone can take is they're a vegan for an ethical reason. It's preposterous. You could do it for a medical reason, even though I don't know what that reason would be, but maybe you can't process meat, you can't process proteins like that. But to do it from an ethical reason is absurd. So this self-appointed expert on veganism states you can't be vegan for ethical reasons, even though veganism is an ethical principle, and then goes on to say you can only practice this ethical principle for medical reasons and not for ethics. Taylor, let me ask you, for what medical reasons would you need to avoid the fur trade, the leather trade, dog fighting, bull fighting, cosmetic testing, circuses, zoos, and all other forms of animal exploitation that have nothing to do with diet? I mean, even in terms of diet, there's no medical condition that exists that would force you to be completely plant-based. So Taylor's off to a good start by getting literally everything completely wrong, but there's still time for him to redeem himself. And the reason I say that is I have plowed a field. It is carnage. It is 12 feet of carnage. And every single plant that you eat is going to be tilled into the ground in some capacity. So you're gonna kill everything. Well, where do I start? Technically not every plant food needs to be tilled into the ground. There are many ways of growing crops that involve no tilling or minimal soil disturbance. But the more obvious answer here is animals are also fed crops, crops that need tilling into the ground. Even hay grown to feed grass-fed cows needs tilling, but no mention of that. I mean, shouldn't that be your main concern seeing as that happens on a much larger scale? But really, I think the more outrageous claim here is that tilling just 12 feet of soil is carnage. I mean, is this just a complete fabrication of his imagination? Either way, the idea that we should avoid tilling soil to grow crops for our own survival because some worms might get caught up in the process is as ludicrous as saying you better not leave your house because you might step on some insects in the process. Also, if tilling 12 feet of soil is carnage, what are your thoughts on chicken farming? Where millions of animals suffer and die in the farms, and then get sent off to a slaughterhouse to be killed by the billion. Is that not carnage? Or the fact that chickens are fed mostly corn and soy with a feed conversion ratio of about two, so you're really doubling the tilling carnage. So it looks like this guy just completely lacks critical thinking skills, or is just plain lying, or both. When you that, that field. famous uh, conversation that Kevin Costner has uh, in Yellowstone. I wrote, that's why I wrote it, yeah. because people have to understand. You have to take ownership. We have to take ownership we do. Anyways, I think he's talking about a scene in this series. I found the clip, so let's watch and see the pure logic and vegan destruction. You ever plow a field, Summer, to plant the quinoa or sorghum or whatever the hell it is you eat? You kill everything on the ground and under it. You kill every snake, every frog, every mouse, mole, vole, worm, quail. You kill them all. So I guess the only real question is, how cute does an animal have to be before you care if it dies to feed you? I mean, poor Kevin Costner having to speak such a load of nonsensical crap. So none of those animals are fast or smart enough to escape the grips of an incredibly slow moving and loud farm plow? A quail? <laughs> what the hell is he on about? And where is all the footage of this carnage due to plowing? Here's a clip. Where's the carnage, mate? This is way more than 12 feet. I mean, I'm not denying that there's some accidents that happen, but where is all the evidence of the carnage? But we're just all supposed to take these guys' words for it, right? That same thing, Ted Nugent has saying, said this on this podcast. He yeah. said, if you want to kill the most things, mm -hmm. become a vegan. And here comes Joe Rogan backing up his ridiculous claim with his incredibly solid and sound original source, Ted Nugent the racist, redneck, knucklehead, anti-vegan hunter and proud animal killer. If you really want to kill the most things, be a vegan. Wow, Ted, got any data to back up that claim? We've got data that shows around one to three trillion marine animals and 80 billion land animals are killed annually for animal agriculture. And they also take up around 77% of the Earth's farmland. Now with 12 feet of tilling soil causes carnage, how much more carnage is happening here? So it looks like Taylor and Joe are the ones who need to take ownership, but of course, won't. So you can have a tofu salad and not be responsible for any death. Fuck you. That's a really good point. A tofu salad. Well, someone needs to tell Ted Nugent that the majority of soy grown, 77%, is fed to livestock. 
and only 7% is used for products like tofu, tempeh, or soy milk. Whoops, <laughs> forgot to mention that, eh, Ted? Also, before any smarty pants say soybeans are pressed for soy oil for humans and the animal feed is just a byproduct. Well, that's nonsense too, because the soy meal for feed accounts for 70% of the total revenue of the industry. So animal feed is the driving force not the oil. Yeah, 100%. If you're thinking about individual life, if you don't think that one life equals one life, if you think that small things aren't as valuable as large things, that's a totally different discussion, and that's a weird discussion. Well, Joe, I'm not sure there are many people who think bacteria has the same moral value as a dog, or a worm which has 300 neurons has the same depth of experience as a cow with about 3 billion neurons. But that's not my position, so I guess you're just attacking a straw man? But if you think that all life is sacred, well, what about the lives of the ground nesting birds, fawns? Yeah. What about the lives of rodents, insects? All those things are getting demolished. Again, Joe just rattles off a bunch of animals' names and doesn't provide any source for his claims and then doesn't talk about the context in which any of these deaths take place. Are these deaths as a result of protecting crops to prevent a complete collapse of our food system? Are they deaths from hobby hunters exploiting crop fields for fun? Are they combine accidents? Just rattling off a bunch of animals' names and not giving any further info is not an argument. And it's hard to tell what his accusation against the vegan philosophy actually is. He's also forgetting to acknowledge that animals killed for meat, cheese, milk and eggs are also fed crops which incur the same kind of deaths on a larger scale. And in fact, 44% of pesticides is used on animal feed in the US, despite animal foods only supplying 30% of the calories. And Joe also doesn't mention that if the world ate plants directly, it would substantially reduce this issue by three quarters, in fact. The average organic avocado farm in Central California is going to kill, on average, around 19,000 ground squirrels a year. So here Taylor makes an outlandish empirical claim, 19,000 ground squirrels killed for avocados. No reference, no source, just a big lofty claim with no evidence at all. I actually heard a similar claim like this from a guy who was once on Rich Roll. We have to grow at least 20 to 40 acres of avocado and we have to you know, be able to sell those directly to our market. That's gonna require me to kill at least 35 to 40,000 gophers to protect those trees. Again, provides no evidence at all other than trust me bro, but although avocado farmers do protect their crops from squirrels and gophers, as do farmers who grow animal feed, but it's just the way they frame these numbers, like 40,000, like over the course of when? Like, what are we talking about here? When you actually look at the population density of gophers, and this is when they're left completely uncontrolled, it's about 20 to 60 gophers per acre. So I guess it is possible to kill 40,000 gophers if you take the highest range of uncontrolled gophers over the whole 40 acres, spanned out to about 17 years, you'll probably get close to 40,000. But this Taylor guy spoke of ground squirrels, which is a completely different animal, and their population densities range from two to 20 per acre. So I'm definitely not sure how he calculated 19,000 killed per farm per year, especially since once they begin to control for these animals, their populations decrease. So what would be these guys' motivations for spouting such outrageous claims? Well, this guy had a gripe with vegans after being criticized for killing the animals on his organic farm. So I wonder how many more animals he's killing for meat on his farm versus protecting his avocado crops. This guy was just incredibly badly motivated to say this. And same goes with Joe Rogan, who's been criticized by his fair share of vegans. Even Ted Nugent has been the target of animal activists because of his bow hunting. And what about Taylor? Well, he's had issues from Peter before after accusations of animal cruelty that took place on the set of his series Yellowstone. And he's also a bloody rancher who kills animals. So it's interesting that wherever you see these people making these claims about vegan diets killing more animals, that it's never coming from a good place like to protect animals. But instead, it's just to attack vegans. And that's just because they're defensive, because they actually kill and eat animals themselves, but not to protect their property from serious damage, but instead for money and to eat them. So these liars are simply trying to justify their own behavior by appealing to vegan hypocrisy to make themselves feel better for participating in the indefensible. That's not counting the billions of bees because they're going to bring the bees up from Brazil to pollinate the, the trees and then they're going to fucking die. They're not sending them back anywhere. They're not keeping them. In some, no, they're gone. Now here Taylor makes claims about billions of bees coming from Brazil. I can't verify this claim either, so I don't know what he's on about once again. It's predominantly California almond producers who use bee pollinators which are transported around to almond groves mainly, and some for avocados, but Taylor doesn't mention that these bees are actually rented from the honey industry, an industry that vegans already boycott. And yes, some bees do die from transport and other stresses, but the honey farmers want their bees to return. 
to make money from them. <laughs> Interestingly, the majority of these pollinating bees actually die from varroa mites and not necessarily from the migration itself. Even stationary honeybees and wild bees fall victim to the varroa mite. But again, Taylor provides no evidence or data to back up his claims, just repeating Piers Morgan talking points to attack vegans with no care for the bees at all. They're gonna spray with some organic, which is probably just like compressed cayenne pepper. They're gonna spray the trees. They're gonna kill every bug, every plant, everything. So cayenne pepper, which acts as a deterrent rather than a lethal pesticide, now kills every bug, every plant, and everything. I didn't know cayenne pepper was such a destructive poison. The obvious question arises, why would plant farmers spray a lethal poison on their crop that kills every plant? I mean, killing their own crop sounds a bit counterproductive to the idea of crop production. So I don't know what he's on about. Does he even listen to the words in the sentences that come out of his mouth? All you gotta do is drive I-5 through the San Joaquin Valley and you won't see, you'll see plenty of almonds, you'll see plenty of all these different groves. You won't see any birds. You won't see anything else. Yeah. They fucking killed them all. Okay, so now the lethal cayenne pepper solution has killed all the birds as well. And his evidence for that is when he drives down the road, he doesn't see any birds. I'm not saying there aren't forms of crop protection that need more animal friendly methods, but it's hard to know what he's actually claiming here. To me, it just sounds like an over-exaggerated attempt to vilify plant foods over animal products. Yeah, that's a hard pill for yeah. a lot of people to swallow that think they're doing something that's ethically correct. And here, once again, Joe just agrees without any critical thought, without asking Jamie to pull anything up. And he doesn't mention that animal products require, on average, 10 times more crop calories than just eating the plants directly. Because just as long as it suits his anti-vegan bias, Joe will just nod along in agreement. Why doesn't Joe ever have any vegan voices on to challenge these knuckleheads? It's like there's no balance on his platform when it comes to this topic because he'll usually have like a broad spectrum of political commentators from left to right. But when it comes to veganism, it's just F vegans, they kill the most animals and that's it. Could it be that the last time you had a vegan on with your main man, Chris Cresser, he absolutely embarrassed him with data and facts and it was just a train wreck? Maybe. If you look anywhere in, in the ecosystem, take man out of it, virtually everything is, is living at the expense of another organism. If a certain weed grows up over the grass, it's killing the grass. This little little sapling grows up over the grass, it's killing the grass. The grass grows up before the weeds, it kills the weeds. It kills the flowers, it kills this. It, everything is in competition with everything else. Here's a new one. Grass kills other grass though. Okay, Taylor, since non-sentient grass kills other non-sentient grass, I guess we can all just kill each other, eh? As well as animal rights, might as well throw human rights out the window as well because everything kills something, right? No point trying to have a consistent moral framework at all. There is not a vegan fish. There's not a vegetarian fish. Every single fish, every frog, they are e they're eating they're eating another organism to survive. Every one of them. Not that it matters in terms of how we navigate our own ethics in human civilization, but there are actually plenty of vegetarian fish. But again, this guy just has complete impunity to talk as much nonsense as he wants without being questioned because it suits Joe's bias. That's what we did. Apes still do it. They talk about oh, they eat fruit. They eat fruit till they get a hold of those little freaking panzer monkeys. Yeah. And then they go to town. If you ever Eating wonder where our violent streak comes from, oh, yeah. watch chimpanzees. Yeah. They, yeah, they kill each other. I mean, it's literally their preferred food. And they eat them alive. They just start chewing yeah. on them. <laughs> Again, no need for human rights, eh? Because killer monkeys do it, so why can't we? I mean, appealing to nature is like one of the world's most well-known logical fallacies, but Again, just completely unchecked by Joe. It just never ceases to amaze me how people like Joe can sometimes be quite insightful on other topics. But when it comes to veganism, they throw all but one brain cell down the toilet. That's the real nature. That's not vegan nature. That's not this bullshit, utopian, artificial paradise that people have created in their mind that they're doing if they're eating vegan. It's just not true. Unless you're growing all of your own food in your yard, everything that you grow, you're picking it yourself, you're just fencing it off to keep squirrels from eating it. If that's not the case, you're involved in murder. So here we have another appeal to nature combined with setting an almost impossible standard for veganism along with redefining what murder means. I don't think combine accidents can be classed as murder. Otherwise, all unintentional road accidents would be tried in court as murder. I also wouldn't categorize all justifiable defense of our cropland as murder. We 100% should be able to defend ourselves, our families, or our property if it's constantly under attack. I would just define murder as unjustified, premeditated, and deliberate killing, just like in the meat and dairy industry. Although we should seek to improve crop protection, in a world where we didn't protect our food resources at all would lead to mass starvation. And also the standard that we should all grow our crops ourselves when most people don't have the means to would also lead to mass starvation. That's not a viable solution. 
But either way, I don't see plant agriculture as unjustifiable. Unless, of course, it's been used to disproportionately fuel factory farms and slaughterhouses so we can eat the flesh of murdered animals. And then what are you going to do when the squirrel gets in? You right. can't fence off your trees. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Well, you're either going to give away a lot of your crop, which you're not going to want to do, or you're going to come up with a way to, or you're going to run the squirrel off. Okay, well, then you just killed it because you ran it out of its habitat. So it just dies a slower death. We don't get to exist without another organism fueling our existence. So Taylor doesn't add anything insightful to the argument here. He just hilariously claims that if you don't let a squirrel eat your vegetable crop at home, then the squirrel will starve and die and that's not vegan and how evil of you. Again, it's just another baseless nonsense claim, but a very good imagination. Period. I know, it's such a hard thing for people to accept. Well, I think it's because you, they're so dissociated. Yeah, it's really vegans who are disconnected from farming. But meat eaters are completely connected to every aspect of meat and dairy production, right? Well, no, they've been completely brainwashed, as was I, by humane advertising and fairy tales about humane meat production for their entire lives. You know what? Vegans have way more awareness about food production than Taylor. He doesn't even know that the animals that people eat also eat crops. And also, if he's so concerned with the welfare of animals, why no mention of the 99% of animals who are factory farmed in horrific, horrible suffering in the US? And why no mention from Joe about this on this occasion? Oh, that's right, because Taylor's embarrassing ramblings suit Joe's anti-vegan bias, so he's nice and comfy here. But out here, you survive or you surrender. You know, wolves don't kill unlucky deer, they kill the weak ones. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's reality. the reality. That's the reality so, of our life. What an absolutely disturbing philosophy on the show right here. Wolves kill weak deer. That's reality. What is he trying to get at here? Should we all go around and kill all the weak humans? So might makes right. What a twisted mentality. Should we not seek to protect vulnerable animals and humans? Or should we all just act like savages and say, hey, you know what? Wolves and monkeys kill each other, so why can't we? Sorry, mate, but you tilled up your ground when you grew potatoes and killed some worms. So now I'm just gonna go on a massive rampage and kill everyone because might makes right and they're weaker than me and wolves do it. When you can walk from your condo to Erewhon <laughs> and buy your $19 almond butter yeah. and never ask yourself, now I can tell you, I can tell you exactly right now how much water it takes in a state with no water to make one almond. Right. It takes three gallons. So now, how nuts? many almonds does one almond tree have? 10,000? We'll do the math. It's nuts. So I will give Joe credit for the timing of the it's nuts here, but I don't know who the hell's paying $19 for a jar of almond butter. Trader Joe's sell it for six bucks a container. And I'm not sure why he thinks eating almond butter is a requirement to be vegan. He then goes on to say one almond takes three gallons of water. That does sound insane. I found the study here. It looks like it's taken into account the entire water footprint of a California almond, but there is some conflicting data here with some suggesting it's about a half a gallon of water per almond. But again, Mr. Biased anti-vegan Taylor here forgets to mention that almonds still take less water than dairy or that there are countless other less water intensive plant foods than almonds. 80% of the world's entire almonds are grown in California, but even then, it's not the biggest consumer of water in that state. That title goes to dairy, where California produces less than 20% of the US's supply. In other words, more water is used to produce one fifth of one country's dairy than four fifths of the world's almonds. Dairy also uses a whopping 70% more water than almond milk, as well as using 18 times more land, emitting over four times more greenhouse gases and seven times more eutrophication caused by manure runoff per litre of milk. Additionally, animal feed uses approximately 10 times more water in California than almonds. And shouldn't Taylor be crying about dairy cheese, which uses about 25 litres of water per teaspoon? And anyways, if anyone has a problem with almonds, just use a less water intensive plant milk like oat or soy. Ironically, by bringing up water use, Taylor has inadvertently made a case against animal agriculture rather than almonds. And bringing up water use is a very strange way to end his attempt at a debunk of ethical veganism. So I hope one day Joe actually has some other voices on to challenge some of the lofty claims made by his badly motivated anti-vegan animal killing meathead guests. Because otherwise, as the world starts to wake up to the truth, Joe will begin to lose more and more credibility. And that has already happened in a short video that was uploaded of this podcast. Many people are seeing straight through this nonsense. Most people already know that animals are also fed crops. So your stupid crop deaths argument can be levied back at meat and dairy tenfold. So finally, ethical veganism is the best way to eliminate your contribution to unjustifiable rights violations and severe and abhorrent animal cruelty and suffering. And furthermore, it will be vegans who seek to improve crop farming practices for animals, not those who make money off killing animals and selling their body parts. So I encourage you all to question the motivations of any anti-vegan Joe Rogan has on his podcast and to live vegan. And thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.